this is Andrea Towers with TV Guide Magazine and TVInsider.com at New York Comic Con, and I am here with the cast of Star Trek Prodigy. Hi. Hello. Hello. Welcome to Comic Con. Thank you. Uh, it's been just about a year since the series premiered. Um, how has it been seeing fans' reactions, especially now coming to Comic Con, being surrounded by fans again after the pandemic, and really being able to engage with them about how they feel about the series? Well, this is the legacy of Star Trek. Fairly predictable, but wonderful <laughs> nonetheless, because it's it's so astonishingly good, and the message is so hopeful in a time that is arguably rather bleak. Well, what I love about um, Star Trek is that it's obviously a franchise that's endured, you know, through so many generations. But um, the different types of shows that are out there and that are, you know, that have been uh, on on screen in the past few years, they're all so different, and they all appeal to so many different types of people and different demographics. And it's like really, it's something for everyone. Um, and I love that your show uh, kind of has that specific like. The, the people that know the franchise really love it, but also it can appeal to like younger kids who just want to get into the series and want to enjoy the series without having all that, you know, kind of big next generation stuff that like their parents grew up on. So it's just, it's, it's really fun. Totally, and it was helpful for me because I hadn't had a way into Star Trek, so this being my introduction into Star Trek, I feel like was the perfect story. We're learning along with the characters sort of what the universe means and what it implies to be a part of Starfleet or something like that, you know? And what does it imply? It implies <laughs> the needs of the many over the needs of the few. <laughs> the, see, we're getting there. Can I borrow yeah, that? Of course. Um, I did grow up on Star on Star Trek, and so like I, uh, I feel as though it's an incredibly important thing for kids to see because there are so many hidden messages around race, around class, around people's behavioral differences, uh, about love, about learning how to put your differences aside and work together, all messages that we seem to need now more than ever. And so it was hugely formative, I think, for my generation. And to find a new and much more palatable for kids way to put that out, I think is I think it genuinely does make an emotional difference on people. It's such an important show. It's where it's where I saw the most diversity as a kid. You know, it's where I first saw people who looked a bit more like me. It just it is it is so beloved because it has such an extraordinary and relatively perfect legacy. And so it feels very cool to now be like in this in this world myself with these talented people. Well, I think the last time uh, you were at New York Comic Con, they announced you as part of the cast, mm -hmm. if I'm not mistaken. So now you're here, and you are a part of the cast. So what can you tell us about Ensign? I can tell you almost nothing <laughs> uh, is the exact answer. Uh, she's... She's a bit she's a bit of a kiss ass, I guess, at, at the start, but she's also kind of got her own there's such a strength to her very quickly. She's quite almost quite precocious. She's got her own ideas and she is determined to um impress the people around her and sometimes overpower the people around her, but I think uh, she's a very mysterious character that you're just going to have to you're going to have to watch her journey unfold. Okay. It's going to get it's going to get fresh and weird. <laughs> Uh, Kate, you are uh, pretty much Star Trek royalty, uh, if I say so myself. Uh, what can fans expect from Captain Janeway, or rather her hologram, uh, in uh, the next uh, set of episodes? Well, <laughs> there are many iterations of Janeway in Prodigy. Uh, not just the hologram, Vice Admiral Janeway, and uh, somebody else. I'm not at liberty to discuss okay. at this m moment. Mm -hmm. They can expect... Um, the unexpected. As I said earlier, it is harrowing what takes place. And then, strangely, very, very rewarding. It's an emotional journey for Vice Admiral Janeway. And you'll see hologram Janeway transcending herself, uh, not achieving sentience. That would be too much to ask and rather absurd, but <laughs> achieving a kind of emotional reality that the kids really respect. Uh, Brett, what can you tell us about your character in this half of the season? Because uh, you seem to be butting heads a, a little bit with uh, with your crew. Yeah, uh, I think my character's <laughs> le <laughs> a little bit. Um, I think my character's learned a lot, you know, over the time coming from sort of, you know, he was on a child labor planet for all of his life and not able to communicate with anyone. <laughs> Classic, you know, just slight trauma. Um, so I think, you know, he's learned a lot about putting, again, the needs of others over himself. And I think uh, it's hard to do that when you don't know who you are or where you come from or, or 
what your purpose is. And um, so this second half of episodes, we're going to find out who Dal is, where he comes from, and sort of, uh, I guess, go deeper into the journey of self-discovery that he's been having the entire um, season. Um, but also get to see him, you know, really like step up to the plate and take care of his people and Gwen specifically and after everything that just happened with her and her father. Um, I'm proud of Dal, but also there's a lot to come, so. Um, how would you say the back half, uh, this kind of back half of these episodes are different than what fans saw in the first set of episodes? Uh, they're much deeper. We're taking the, we're peeling back the layers of the onion. You know, if we thought we knew everyone, we're gonna find out much more. Uh, we're gonna get to see deeper sides of the characters and get to see them form deeper connections with each other, yeah. as well as how to relate to now the more serious uh, universe that they're entering into with the Federation and Starfleet and all of these sort of like more, um, you know, impactful things that they might not have come to terms with yet. Uh, they're going to have to really step up to the plate. It's thickening. Yeah. And in that thickening, there's so much learning that's going on. He's obviously in the forefront of this, but I, I think the tension is, is exquisite. They have drawn an exquisite tautness in the second part. Don't you agree? Totally. Pressure is mounting. The Hegeman brothers are just great. Well, I love it. And I love that. I think, uh, you know, you said about, um, you know, everything kind of growing and, and evolving, the characters evolving and finding themselves, that's also such a big part of Star Trek, uh, those relationships and those those deeper connections between characters and their um, a lot of their emotional journeys. I think that's what fans relate to. Totally. Hmm. Well, Star Trek Prodigy returns with new episodes on October 27th on Nickelodeon. And thank you guys so much for stopping by. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.